Ever had a really killer headache? Well, after today's video, you'll think twice before telling someone you feel like your head is about to explode. Welcome to Sick Flicks, where I take a deep dive into the cinematic sewer to help you embrace your inner gore geek. Generally, when I do one of these videos, I review one specific film. But today, we're doing something a little different. That's right, it's a list. AKA, the internet's equivalent of a clip show. Huzzah! While I love Splatter and all of its myriad shapes and forms, I think most gore geeks have a real soft spot for the exploding head. When done properly, a good exploding cranium is a showstopper set piece. The kind of thing that has you scrambling for the rewind button and cheering at the screen. It's a signature piece in any great FX technician's bag of tricks, and some guys like Tom Savini have basically made a career of one-upping themselves in subsequent features. One last thing before we dive in. These are five of my favorite exploding head gore gags, but this is not to say these are the best, or that this list is inclusive. In fact, I can think of four great ones that aren't here, but may appear in a future video. So if I missed your favorite, don't fret. It'll probably turn up in another video, but definitely leave me a comment below. And now, without further ado, let's get to the list. We kick things off with what is arguably the most recognized exploding head in cinematic history. That's right, it's the one you've seen in a million internet GIFs. We're talking about Scanners. Director David Cronenberg is no stranger to gore. His unsettling body horror cycle has been making audiences squirm for decades. The Canadian auteur ventures beyond straight horror and into the realm of sci-fi with this 1981 outing, but rest assured, there's still plenty of carnage. The story of Scanners revolves around people with telepathic and telekinetic powers who are being scooped up for what appear to be nefarious purposes by a giant weapons and security systems company. The inimitable Michael Ironside leads a group of rogue scanners in an attempt to stop the company, but he has to square off with a corporate agent played by Stephen Lack. Anyway, the scene we're talking about today happens early in the film. Ironside's character basically gets into a psychic battle with one of the corporation scanners, played by veteran character actor Louis Del Grand, and Del Grand's head explodes like one of those giant cysts you see on an episode of Dr. Pimple Popper. <laughs> Gary Zeller, Chris Wallace, and crew achieved the splat-tastic effect by stuffing a faked head full of latex scraps, leftover lunch, stage blood, and allegedly dog food and rabbit livers. Mmm, rabbit livers. Then Zeller fired a shotgun at the fake head from behind. The results speak for themselves, but if they don't, here's the crew talking about it in a special feature segment. Gary took a big shotgun and went lie down behind the dummy, pointed it like right there, and then he blew the hell out of it. This entire sequence is unforgettable, with Del Grand and Ironside selling the psychic tension for everything it's worth, then it pays off in a way that few people expected back in 1981. Because of that, Scanners will go into the pantheon of exploding head gags as one of the all-time greats. No list of exploding head gags is complete without mentioning Tom Savini's work in Bill Lustig's sleazy slasher cult classic, Maniac. If you haven't seen my review, and if you haven't, why haven't you, then here's a quick breakdown. Joe Spinell plays Frank Zito, a schlubby loser who stalks and kills young women, scalps them, and then places the hair on mannequins littered throughout his dumpy apartment. In other words, he's the average guy you meet on Tinder. Early in the film, Frank runs across a couple making out in a parked car near a bridge. This offends him, so he grabs his trusty shotgun and, well, the rest is pretty much movie history. The shotgun to the head sequence in Maniac is a legendary piece of FX work for a number of reasons. First off, it's a fantastic showcase of Tom Savini's work. Savini spent his young adult years in Vietnam as a combat photographer, and his harrowing experiences during the war have provided a lot of inspiration for his gruesome cinematic creations. But that's not the only reason it's so revered. Savini actually pulls triple duty in this scene. He's the special effects supervisor, he's the guy making out with the girl in the car, and in a really crazy twist, he's also the guy with the shotgun. That's right, Savini essentially blew his own head off as a whole different person. 
Savini crafted the prop head for the explosion, and it was made in his own image, so he wound up playing the victim. And like Scanners, this head was stuffed with fake blood, leftover food, and other odds and ends to make it look more real. The head was filled with shrimp dip and cabbage and apple cores and, you know, rubbers filled with blood. And since he designed the prop head, and they'd only get one shot at it, it made sense for him to be the guy to blow it up too. Seems like that should be some sort of Guinness World Record or something. The scene was inspired by the real-life Son of Sam murders, wherein David Berkowitz killed couples making out in cars in New York. This adds a whole extra level of creepiness to the sequence. Even almost four decades later, this effect still looks amazing. In fact, it looked so real back in the 80s that this is allegedly the moment where famed film critic Gene Siskel decided he'd seen enough and walked out of Maniac. According to legend, he left the theater here and never saw the rest of the film. At any rate, something tells me this might not be the last we see of Tom Savini on this list. When there's no room in hell, the dead will walk the earth. That's the infamous tagline for George Romero's zombie classic, 1978's Dawn of the Dead. Perhaps the greatest zombie film ever made. There's a ton of great splatter in Romero's second Living Dead film. There's the zombie who gets his head chopped off by the helicopter rotors, the guy who gets ripped to pieces using the blood pressure machine, and the list goes on and on. All of this spectacular carnage was created by, you guessed it, Tom Savini. While the bulk of Dawn of the Dead takes place in an abandoned mall, the Monroeville Square Mall in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where there are still historical markers commemorating the film even though the mall looks very different these days, this early sequence takes place in a tenement building where the living dead are being kept in a basement. The SWAT team storm the high-rise and all hell breaks loose. <laughs> Next thing you know, one racist cop is just blasting anything that moves, including an innocent black man who doesn't even have time to blink before his head turns to red mist. While there's not as much lingering on the exploding head in Dawn of the Dead as there is in the other films on this list, that's part of why it's so memorable. You just never really see it coming, and if you blink, you might miss it. Like he would in Maniac a few years later, Savini handcrafted this latex head and filled it with various scraps, fruit cores, pasta, and fake blood. He sealed it with plaster, so when I would turn it over or, or, or uh, open the molds up, I would have this rubber head filled with these goodies. So we did it brown like a Puerto Rican and the Afro wig sort of in the goatee. Then he did the honors with the shotgun, creating one of the more shocking moments in a film filled with shocking moments. It seems safe to say that between this scene and the sequence in Maniac, that Tom Savini is pretty much the king of exploding heads. If that were me, I'd want that right on my tombstone when I died. So far, we've seen heads exploded by shotguns and psychic powers. But our next clip goes in a totally different direction, offering up death by... basketball? Ah <laughs> yeah, we can only be talking about Wes Craven's 1986 film Deadly Friend, which has a robotically enhanced Christy Swanson exploding Anne Ramsey's head with the most unlikely of implements, a basketball. <laughs> Deadly Friend is a dire film, one only really worth watching for this scene, a scene that almost never existed. Part of the reason why Deadly Friend is so terrible is because Warner Brothers interfered heavily with the production. Craven wanted to make a family-friendly sci-fi film that proved he could do more than horror, but the studio wanted more gore and violence, and to accommodate them, Craven was forced into reshoots. This explains why the film feels like two different movies stitched together. It essentially was. The basketball scene was very different in the original version of the film. It didn't involve a basketball at all, and was significantly tamer. Craven reshot it to make it more violent, but then the MPAA made him cut that for an R rating. Craven explained the absurd process in the following story. On Deadly Friend, we had a scene where a nasty old lady gets her head knocked off with a basketball. The actual scene, as it was originally cut, was fabulous. She was running around the room like a chicken with its head cut off for 10-15 seconds. It was bizarre and wonderful, and they cut the shit out of it. So I compiled what we called our decapitation compilation. This was all the films that I knew of that had decapitations in them, that had an R rating, and sent it to them. They immediately sent it back, saying they just base it on what they feel in the room at the time. And we had like 8 or 10 films in there, like The Omen, where the guy gets his head cut off by a sheet of glass, and it didn't matter to them. As it turns out, Swanson didn't actually throw the ball that exploded the fake head. 
a fake head Swanson says was filled with cow brains the FX crew had purchased. Instead, after the cut, a member of the FX team made the throw, to protect the expensive prop and to make sure they got the shot. <laughs> Eat your heart out, LeBron James. And after all that, we arrive at our final clip, for now. Are you tired of talking about Tom Savini yet? I could have put 1981's The Prowler here, which features yet another exploding Savini head gag. But let's shift gears a bit, shall we? There are no shotguns in this clip, but you'll probably never look at hooks and chains in the same way again. That's right, we're talking about Clive Barker's Hellraiser. The film turned Doug Bradley's pinhead, a name Barker hates, into a horror icon and is a heady mix of sex, violence, and sadomasochism. The concoction proved a little too potent for the MPAA, who demanded numerous cuts to the film in order to give it an R rating, including several to the scene we're about to discuss. While Hellraiser has its fair share of squirm-inducing moments, it's hard to argue that any of them are more gruesome than the film's climax. Here, Ashley Lawrence's Kirsty is summoned Pinhead and the Cenobites back to Earth to recapture her uncle Frank. Pinhead and crew always get their man, and Frank suffers greatly for escaping hell, as you can see in this clip. Jesus wept. <laughs> <laughs> After watching that, it's hard to believe there was a more gory version of this scene, right? Well, the MPAA made Barker and company cut some of the exploding head and leaking brains from the shot. Oh, and that great Jesus wept line? That wasn't in the original script. Actor Andrew Robinson suggested it instead of the more traditional fuck you that Barker wrote. Clive loved Robinson's idea, and the rest is history. One more pinhead? Then be sure to check out my full review of Hellraiser. You'll find a link to it here on the screen. Make what the clickin' and I'll meet you over there. Until next time, I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, bringing you all the splatter that matters.